I'm often asked by my patients, you know, I want to cut back on coffee or caffeine. What can I do? And first you want to look at why you're going for the coffee uh, and what you need it for and to think about what alternatives there are out there. So is there anything good about coffee other than its yummy taste? Well, yes, it's the number one source of antioxidants in the American diet. It helps you provide focus, gives you energy, and it makes you feel good. But there are alternatives that you might want to learn about that means you don't have to drink so much coffee. There are reasons people should cut back on their coffee consumption and their caffeine consumption because for some people it can induce anxiety, insomnia, palpitations, fatigue, and it can be kind of making them a little jittery and anxious, which is not so good. Now, people consume a lot of coffee in America. Uh, a typical cup has about 100 milligrams and often people have two, three, four, eight cups, which is not good. And they wonder why they can't sleep or they're anxious or they're cranky or yelling at their spouse. <laughs> So the question is, how do you cut back on coffee and caffeine? Well, if you just stop it, you're gonna get a coffee or caffeine withdrawal headache. So that's not so fun. Uh, the key is to do it slowly. So if you're drinking two cups, drink one cup for a while and then cut it to half a cup and then a quarter cup and then switch to green tea and slowly you can taper off. Now there are good alternatives to coffee that have caffeine but aren't as irritating or stimulating and have a little bit less caffeine. Like green tea is my favorite because not only does have a little caffeine, but it's full of theanine, which is a powerful relaxant. Uh, and it's actually used uh, as a meditation aid for monks in Zen Buddhism. So it's kind of cool. Uh, but there are a number of caffeine-free alternatives, which you may not have heard about, uh, including mushrooms and adaptogens. Now you think, I'm not gonna drink a mushroom, but actually they're yummy to drink. In fact, I'm drinking some right now. And there are medicinal mushrooms, functional mushrooms, that are great alternatives to coffee. And my favorite is something called lion's mane. And this is it here, it looks like a brain, lion's mane for the brain. Uh, and it's great for productivity, for focus, for creativity. And that's really why most of us are reaching for coffee. Uh, the good news is it's totally vegan. No lions are harmed in the harvesting of these mushrooms. Uh, you just wanna make sure it's extracted from the fruiting bodies of log-grown lion's mane mushroom. In addition to mushrooms, there's a class of compounds called adaptogens, and these help you adapt to stress and help you become more resilient. You might've heard of ginseng, that's one of them, but there's one called rhodiola, which is fantastic. And it's great for productivity, it's great for creativity, it's used in Scandinavia as a superfood, it's called golden root. So there's a lot of ways to shift your caffeine and coffee consumption and switch to alternatives that are probably much better for you than long-term high coffee intake. So a little bit of coffee is fine, but you don't want to be tanking that all day long. So switch to green tea, switch to some of these mushrooms and adaptogens that you can use to really help boost your immune system, to help your clarity, focus, and energy, and help you become more stress resilient and get the job done, which is what we all want to do.